Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are making chicken and mushroom pie. One of my favorites for the fall. You will love the hearty chicken and mushroom filling and that buttery puff pastry on top. It's so delicious. So if you need to impress somebody this fall, this is the ticket. <laughs> First, we are going to roast our chicken. I really like to roast the chicken because I find that you get more succulent chicken that doesn't dry out. It also creates a situation where you're passively cooking the chicken while you can be actively cooking the sauce. So I find it's a little bit quicker this way. So I'm working with bone-in, skin-on chicken breasts. Um, I think that's the best cut of meat to keep it nice and moist and delicious. And this is gonna go in at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for just about 45 minutes or until it's golden brown and cooked through. So while our chicken's in the oven, we can prepare our puff pastry. So I just have a sheet here of store-bought puff pastry. So this brand actually comes folded, and because of that, this is how I kind of came up with just the decorative scoring, which I'm gonna show you how to do in a second. So I like to get a little flour on the board, um, just because we're gonna roll it out a little bit, just so that it can completely cover our cast iron skillet uh, that I am going to bake this in. And I'm gonna be working with a 10 inch cast iron skillet. Okay, so now the trick is just to score. So about halfway through, you don't wanna go all the way through, because then you'll have too many open slits and the sauce will actually ride up through the slits <laughs> and make your pastry all damp and bubble through the slits. I actually learned that from experience. So don't go all the way, about halfway. And then you want to just trace the panel lines like this. I like to do this because then you can use three different patterns, which I think adds to the beauty of the puff pastry once it's baked. So we're gonna go diagonally first, about, I don't know, an inch or so apart. And then you're just gonna do the opposite direction on the other side. It doesn't have to be totally perfect and match up. I think the key is just to make kind of just some decorative slits. I don't know, I think it makes it look really homey and sort of cozy-like. Then I'm gonna take my rolling pin, and this is one of the reasons why I like a French rolling pin, because it makes it really easy to drape pastry on when you need to move it, um, which is kind of hard when you have the kind of rolling pins with the handles. So we are just going to gently Pop this on here and transfer it onto our baking sheet. So I'm gonna place this in the fridge until it comes time to pop it on top. And the reason why I like to do it in advance is you will notice by the time you've handled it, you've rolled it out and done all your scoring, this pastry is pretty soft. If we were to put this on top of our filling and put it in the oven, it would probably melt straight away and wouldn't puff up. So puff pastry does best when it's really, really cold. In fact, I even like to put it in the freezer, the whole pie in the freezer before it hits the oven because I find you just get the better puff that way um, and it doesn't melt on you before it actually puffs up. Okay, now for the filling. So I've got my 10 inch cast iron skillet heating up here. To that I'm gonna add four slices of bacon that I've just chopped into small pieces, like bite-sized pieces. And I love using the bacon because we are basically going to cook this bacon until it gets nice and crispy. And then it's gonna leave us this beautiful fat that we are then going to cook the vegetables in. It really does add a ton of flavor um, and prevents the need from just adding more oil or more butter. And I really love a cast iron skillet for this recipe because the even heat of cast iron will get you some of the crispiest bacon. It also adds great color to our caramelized onions and mushrooms. You'll see how brown and delicious they get. Then we're gonna spoon out our bacon and allow it to drain on a plate lined with a paper towel. So now see all of this beautiful fat? We are going to cook our onions in this. So I have one and a quarter cups of sliced onions, yellow onions that I've cut into little half moons. And we are just going to pop them in here and let them get all translucent, caramelized, and delicious. And honestly, the longer you let them cook in the bacon fat, the more delicious they're going to be because they're gonna get really tender and silky and sweet and caramelized, it's just so good. Then, once they start to look like this and they're getting nice and golden brown and delicious looking, then you can add the fresh thyme. So, I like to use at least two tablespoons of freshly chopped thyme, just because this is gonna also flavor the rest of the pie. Now just be careful because if you've wet the thyme like I have, you hear all that crackling and snapping, that's the water hitting the bacon fat. So word to the wise, make sure you dry off your thyme, which is something I didn't do before I threw it in there. So that's why you hear all that snap, crackle, and pop. <laughs> okay, now that our onions are looking good, we can go ahead and spoon them out. 
Then we are gonna add our mushrooms. So basically what we're doing at this stage is just adding more and more flavor. So, so much of cooking, I think, is just really adding components on top of each other so that you're building the flavor as you go along. So by the time we're done with all of this sauteing, we're gonna have the most flavorful, delicious sauce. So it is worth the effort. So I've got eight ounces of white button mushrooms that I've sliced. Now, because bacon is pretty salty, I'm actually not salting these vegetables, which is typically not the way I like to do it. I usually like to salt and pepper as I go, but in this instance, I like to wait till the end just to test for seasoning because if you keep putting salt on each component by the time you get to the end you're gonna have a pretty salty filling <laughs> so I like to wait and the trick with mushrooms and getting them browned um, which is gonna bring out their best flavor is just to sometimes let them sit so I know it's tempting to kind of get in there and start stirring things around really quickly but then it's just gonna take longer for them to actually brown so you can see the beautiful color that they get by just letting them sit there and hang out a bit then you can add your mushrooms to your bowl with the onions. Okay, now for our sauce. So to do that, I'm gonna create a roux, which is typically equal parts butter to flour, but for this recipe, I like to do three tablespoons of butter to two tablespoons of flour. I think that gets kind of the best texture, to be honest. So once your butter is nice and foamy, then you can add in the flour. And then whisk in the flour until you get a nice paste. And then just cook it for about a minute or so. And see, it's just soaking up all of that flavor that the bacon and the vegetables added. So you don't wanna wash your pan out before you do this. <laughs> We're gonna add two cups of chicken broth. And it goes. Then increase the heat to a medium high flame. This is gonna help that broth thicken up a bit. And it'll also thicken once it's in the oven with the puff pastry baking. And then we're gonna add some seasoning. So I like to do, I don't know, two to five dashes of Worcestershire sauce. There you go. Probably more than two to five, but <laughs> I love the flavor of Worcestershire sauce. And then we also wanna add a teaspoon of Dijon mustard. And then also some freshly cracked pepper. You could choose to add some heavy cream if you wanted to. Um, I kind of like a nice brown sauce with this because of the mushrooms, but a little splash of heavy cream isn't gonna hurt anybody. <laughs> I don't know, I find that sometimes it can dilute the flavor too much, so I just put a little dash there. Then we're gonna add in all of our gorgeous vegetables. So I've got my mushrooms and the onions. And then I just shredded my chicken off the bone. I like to leave it kind of nice, generous chunks, um, so I wouldn't shred it too much. I think it's best to leave it kind of hearty that way. There, and then we are just going to stir all of this up until we have our gorgeous looking, delicious filling. As this simmers in the oven while the puff pastry bakes, it's just gonna develop even more flavor as all of these ingredients mingle together. This is the time to taste. So let's see, do we need some salt? Oh, it's delicious. I would not touch it. I would not add any salt because you've got the salt from the bacon and then you've got the salt from the Worcestershire sauce. So that's kind of salty too. So I would leave it just as is, but you try it at home and you add salt if you feel you need to. Mm. That is so good. Okay, now, oh wait, we forgot our bacon. Just a minute. <laughs> the star of the show, we can't forget that. So I have all my crispy bacon here and that is going in. There we go. Now here comes a very important part. You wanna let this cool for at least 15 minutes. That will allow the filling to cool enough so that when we put our puff pastry on top, we're not gonna melt it right away. It's best that it starts to get warm once it's in the oven. Okay, so this is nice and cool. And in fact, because I was shooting and I needed to hurry this up, <laughs> I popped this in the freezer. But you could absolutely do the same thing too. Just pop it in there for like 10 minutes and we are just gonna plop this right on top. There, like so. Now, the other thing I like to do is just turn under the corners there. And if it's really chilled, it might crack a little bit, but that's okay. You can kind of just mold it back into shape. You want to work quickly. You don't want to dilly-dally because remember that filling, although it's cool, it's still a little bit warm um, and you don't want it to start melting on you. Then we're going to brush it with a beaten egg just quickly. There we go. And the egg can help seal it to your pan, just, you know, if you get the edges like that. And then it'll also give it a beautiful golden shine once it's baked. All right, there we go. We're gonna go in for 400 degrees Fahrenheit for about 20, 25 minutes, just until it's golden brown and puffed up. Oh, this looks so good. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is so good. <laughs> You're gonna love me or hate me for this one because this is not low calorie, but let me tell you, it is high on deliciousness. I hope you guys give it a try and let me know what you think. I think it'll be a new winner at your house for sure. <laughs> all right, you guys, I'll see you back here next week where we're gonna kick off all of my Thanksgiving recipes. I can't wait. Until then, bye.